everyone. So, welcome to episode 13. I'm gonna double check. Um, this is Whip It Podcast. Um, where I talk about all things crafty because I'm really bad about starting things and never finishing them. So I decided that I'm going to whip it, which means they're work in progress. And I figure if I um, have a podcast where I talk about all the things that I'm working on, that I'll do them more often. Sometimes that works. Sometimes that doesn't. So, yeah. This is episode 13. So I am on my YouTube channel here where I can just see all of the episodes. So, yeah. That is how I keep track of that. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and get straight into the whips because I've got a couple. So this first one right here is started, not finished of course, and it is a crocheted baby hat. I'm about, I think I'm on row 16 here, I'm going to probably rip it back um, to where my stitch marker is, that's how I know what the beginning of the row is, is I use a little bobby pin as my stitch marker. Quick, cheap, easy, I've got hundreds of them lying around the house, so yeah, if I lose them, I don't feel bad about it. Um, so, yeah, I need to finish this. I did get more yarn, not of this particular colorway. Maybe I did. I can't remember. I bought a ton of yarn for baby hats, and I left it in the front room. <clears throat> so I may disappear for a second, especially once I have to change the battery, because I see I have a single bar. Why do I always do that? I don't know, but my battery life, like, seems to just disappear as soon as I put it on. Like, it's a fresh battery. I just put it in like yesterday? I don't know. Anyways. Um, the next one is in this bag. This is a, an Ursula bag I got in a makeup swap, I want to say. But, um, yeah. This is something I am so excited about, and I have been working on this pretty much exclusively for the last week. I not only cast on, did the one-by-one -one ribbing, did the leg portion, heel flap, heel turn, and all of my instep decreases. I am now solidly working on the foot of my second sock for the uh, box of socks cowl with um, Kristen of a and Vine. So this is the yarn. It looks like it's a just a basic red yarn. It is slightly variegated. Um, it's more, it is very, very subtle even in person, but yeah, you can kind of see the tonal differences. Um, this is Lorna's Laces in their Shepherd's Sock base, and the colorway I believe was Red Stripe, and it's from their 2013 limited edition um, colorway for Jimmy Bean's wool, which I really like them. So I ordered some more. So I'm going to go ahead and go into acquisitions. Um, so I placed a couple of orders and ooh. I'm missing a bag. I'm missing quite a bit of stuff here. So, um, I'm just going to start with what's in my hand right now. This is some Madeline Tosh in the Dandelion base. And it is 90% um, Superwash Merino Wool and 10% Fine Linen. It is a fingerling weight and there are 325 yards. And this is in the Aquarius colorway. It's just beautiful. Um, this is turning up a little bit more blue than what it is in real life. It's way more of a, um, a violet. This uh, Madeline Tosh yarn 
was dyed specifically for Jimmy Bean's wool. Um, you can't get it anywhere else, and it is there January 2016. You can pre-order um, all of this year's yarns, and then they'll ship um, as they become available. And I saw Aquarius, and it's this beautiful sky blue. Oh, I want to get my hands on that too. Um, but yeah, this is just, it's got lighter blue, or lighter blue, it's got blue, it's got some blue in there, which is showing up more, it's showing up way brighter um, than what it really is. So, it's more of a, um, more of a, a violet rather than there, it's showing up true to color. So, it's beautiful. Um, I do intend on making this into a hat for a uh, co-worker of mine who is actually a really cool guy. And, um, yeah. <laughs> but purple is his go-to color right now, so this is going to be a hat for him. The next thing I got, I had intended to make into socks. This loveliness and it's just too lovely for me to wear on my feet like I want this displayed around my neck honestly I, I just I want to wear it here this hiccups as always are evident is Lorna's Laces Shepherd Sock, which is 80% superwash merino and 20% nylon. There are 430 yards. And this colorway is in the February 2016 Ragnar's Revenge. So, it's just this beautiful teal mint um, with dark, almost like charcoaly brown flecks. And Kristen is also hosting um, the Waiting for Rain Cal. Um, it is a paid-for pattern, but I think I'm going to purchase it, and then I'll order another one of these skeins. Hopefully it's still available on the first, because they are limited edition. There's only They only get, I want to say, 100 skeins, 75 skeins. They, don't, they only get a certain amount of, skein, of these color, dyed colorways. And this is just beautiful. Something tells me it's gone already. Um, but it might not be, so I'm going to try and pick up another skein because it does require like 850 to 900 yards of a colorway. So if I can get it, I will. If I can't, I'm going to see about trying to find something that matches maybe this brighter blue, this more aqua color, turquoise color, um, and do the lace out of that brighter color because there's lace panels like to kind of just cut into it and then use this as the all over base color. So, I mean, I have enough, enough yarn um, to make a, a crud of socks to fill my box of socks, so I don't necessarily need another skein of sock yarn. So, I might order another one of these and another colorway. Who knows? probably the Aquarius colorway because that was pretty and I want all of those colors. I love Madeline Tosh. Like Madeline Tosh is quickly becoming a favorite of mine. Um, so, yeah. Another thing that I have, it is kind of yarn related. Um, it's more fiber related, but it's a drop spindle. It is my very first drop spindle and this I got um, from Jimmy Bean's Wool as well, and I believe this is their lightweight spindle. It's just a basic spindle. I want to say I paid like $30 for it, which is still pretty expensive for a drop spindle. Um, but it is real wood, and it's made by the Wool Tree Mill in the USA. So, she's got a hook on both ends. So I'm excited. Um, I did order some roving from Knit Picks, and I'm waiting on it. Um, to come in. So, yeah. 
Alright, I'm gonna go grab the other stuff and change out my battery because it's really close to dying. So, I'll be right back. Alright, so I am back. I have a full battery and I have all the stuff that I was talking about um, that I didn't have with me. So, I'm gonna talk about the baby yarn that I purchased because I bought a lot. Um, this one I've already actually started using. Uh, I went to Michael's. Michael's was having a sale, like, on a lot of their baby yarns. It was buy one, get one 50%, and then a lot of these were on clearance as well. So, it was like two fifty dollars a skein, and then... No, that's not... That's not yarn-related. Um, but anyways, so it was like two fifty. dollars $1.90, like I got it on like super cheap. I think I paid like $35 for all the skein all these skeins. And I can probably get like four to five hats out of each one. So um yeah. So I got this guy, which is just blue, so it's got some yellows, browns, and white. This color is little boy blue. And it is by Burnett Softy Baby. This is some of the softest yarn ever. Um, but I can already tell this is going to peel. So, fun, but not fun. So, um, I actually need to make a bigger hat out of this. Um, because the one I made is more of a preemie size. So, then I got this guy. And this guy, this is Loops and Threads, Snuggly Wuggly, um, in the color Dove Gray. And then I got this guy, which is um, Loops and Threads, Charisma Baby, which is also a nice fluffy color. And this is in uh, the colorway Toy Train, which is got yellow, blue, and gray. Have you been noticing that I've got a trend here because I'm going to show you something later on in a minute. Then I got this guy which is another loops and thread. This is the Snuggly Wuggly Dip Dye in the colorway Daffodils. So it's just variegated yellows. Got this one which is another loops and thread Snuggly Wuggly Dip Dye and this is in the colorway Wavelength. So it's got some aquas, some blues, looks like it's got some deeper blues, possibly some green in there, so that's going to be fun. Then I got this red hot, red hot, <laughs> that's a candy, red heart soft baby steps, and this kind of reminds me of like a pink camo, which is why I bought it, which is actually cherry cola print. So, where I live, Camo seems to be pretty popular, and since these are going to the local hospital, I'm going to make sure that everyone's got a little something for everyone. Then I got some more Loops and Threads Charisma Baby in the colorway pink, which is this really bright fuchsia pink color. And then I got this guy, which is Lavender Lullaby, and it is by Burnett Softy as well. Lovely lavenders, greens, and blues. Some of this guy, which is more loops and threads, snuggly wuggly dip dye in the colorway purple haze. And this has just got whites, um, different shades of purples, like a pale pink in there. So, very pretty. And last but no means least, another snuggly wuggly in the colorway soft gray. So, just a nice neutral color uh, to go with all those two. And I think I'm actually going to put the soft gray on the pink there to finish off this baby hat. So, that's all the baby yarn that I bought. and. I'm going to go crazy once I'm finished with the baby shower today, like I'm just going to make all the baby hats. I've got another big skein of green, um, but I didn't buy that recently. I've had it in my stash and I'm just going to use it up. I've actually got three more of those massive skeins that you can get from Walmart for like five bucks, six bucks. 
uh, yeah, I need to make those into baby hats too. So, on to, I'm going to save the last accus acquisition, acquisition for last. Um, I'm going to go into finished projects, because I only have a couple. So, I have baby hats. <laughs> uh, baby hat number seven and baby hat number eight. This was the baby hat I was talking about that I made out of that baby yarn. I made it out of a 3.5 millimeter hat, but for some reason it turned out way smaller than this one. So, yeah. I'm going to make this one in a bigger hook size. I have a 3.75 sitting right next to me, so I'm hoping that quarter of a millimeter um, will help get it up to a regular baby hat size. This one needs its ends sewn in. I sewed it in the ends because I thought I was going to be giving this as a baby gift um, in the for the baby shower I'm going to later on this afternoon. But because it is more of a preemie size, even though I'm pretty sure this baby is going to be tiny, um, just kind of based on the siblings, um, this is the mother's first baby. So technically, that usually not technically, but usually that means a smaller baby for the first one and the babies just progressively get bigger as the mother has more and more children. But the father is small um, and this baby's older siblings um, are smaller, especially the little girl. Like she's, I want to say she's almost three and she looks more like she's coming up on her second birthday. Like she's tiny. Um, super sweet girl though. Even the oldest one, which is almost five, looks like he should be three. So they are smaller people, um, but I just, I'm thinking this baby is going to be between seven and eight pounds, in which that means the baby is going to have a bigger head than this. So this is a preemie size. I'm going to make one out of this guy. So, uh, not out of this guy, but out of the bigger hook. So that is all I have for finished objects because I've been working pretty much exclusively on those socks um, when I'm not at work. So with that being said, I'm going to go into another segment, a new one, called hand ties. So I finished something, my very first skein of hand dyed. Um, didn't turn out as I expected. The blue is a little paler than I wanted. The yellow is a little bit more green. It looks pretty bright here, but in person it's a little more greeny. Um, and the gray is more... There's just not enough pigment. I wanted that gray to be a little bit more darker or a little bit more intense. So this is more of a semi-solid. Um, this is on 100% cotton. So I'm probably going to crochet these up into a couple of um, washcloths in the to throw in the baby shower or in the baby gift as well for the for the shower I'm going to this afternoon, which I can get done get that and the hat done in like a couple of hours. Um, so yes, baby's gonna have some cute little handmaids, but. I don't know what I don't know what I would name this colorway. I was going for like a rubber ducky bath time, like bubble bath kind of feel. So like gray for the bathtub, blue for the water, yellow for a rubber ducky. So you know, that's where I was going with this and I just I don't know what I would call it. I don't know if I'd call it bath time fun or what, but it's super super cute. I love the colors. Um I just wish the gray was a little more intense, so I think the next time I do this, um, I'm going to try, immer this is, is using an immersion technique, but it's more of a painted on immersion. <sighs> Actually, it's not immersion at all, because immersion means you would like, submerge it into the uh, dye. This wasn't done that. I put it in bottles, like these and I just squirt it onto the yarn itself um, and then I baked the yarn for like I want to say five minutes um, 
after letting the color sit on it for four days. I put it into the spare room and I forgot about it. And then I rinsed it. There was so much yellow dye. Oh my goodness. So much yellow dye. I was rinsing yellow dye for days. Like, it took me a good solid five minutes to get the yellow dye off of this. So, yeah. So that was interesting. So I might try um, an immersion, submersion technique with my next dye with these colors. Um, we'll see how that goes. Yes. So. Alright, so I have been wanting to try a knitting crate or a, a knitting subscription box, whatever, however you want to say it. Um, so I went with one that had been kind of, I've been eyeballing for a while. Um, I looked up some stuff. Jen Likes Yarn on YouTube has done a review on Knit Crate. I um, was opened a couple boxes and I was like, okay, I'll try it. Um, I don't like the fact that you pay for it in the middle of no at the beginning of one month and you get pay and you get your crate get shipped out to you in the middle of the next month. So it takes a month and a half for you to get your crate, your subscription box from Knit Crate, which I don't like. Um, I do have subscription to um, other boxes. You, you, pay ten dollars and by the middle of that month you're getting that month's you know if you order your your box before the first you're going to get the next um, subscription if you order after the first you're going to be following into the next one um, but you don't get charged but before you get your next crate or your your next subscription so Um, I got charged for my March subscription box before I even got my February one, and that really, really upset me. Because um, that's $90 before I've even gotten a box. And I'm like, what am I paying for? What am I paying you people for? Because, like, I don't know what I'm, I'm getting. I don't know if I want to pay for the next month if I don't, because I don't know what I'm getting. Um... So I got, I did sign up for the Newbie, the Knitter's Newbie crate, which is right here. It finally did come, um, and it was kind of a weird thing because Pre President's Day was the 15th. Um, I got shipping notice on the 17th, and it was here by Friday. So it got here relatively quickly, but it still, it, it really made me angry. So I canceled my subscription. I have one more Knit Crate box coming up. Uh, I think I'm going to try... I'm going to look into a couple of other boxes. It's looking like I'm either going to go Yarn Crave or Fiberista. Um, those two looked good. And so did Knitterly. Knitterly's been looking cool too. So I've got the card here. So the Knit Crate Infinity Cowl. Welcome to Knit Crate Newbies. This month you'll be completing this lovely Infinity Cowl. Um, with the included yarn, extras, pattern, and videos. If you have any questions while working on this project, please contact Andrea. Happy knitting. Yes, you'll be knitting soon. Andrea and Joe join us at Facebook and Ravelry. So the yarn I got is this guy. And that's showing up true to color. This is Blue Sky Alpaca Worsted Cotton, 100% organically grown, one hank. And this is in the color 632. This is a, I want to say it's a worsted weight. It's soft. I'm not a big fan of cotton personally. It smells amazing, but that's because of the extra, not because the yarn is actually stored um, in a nice one. The next one I have is this guy, and this is the Ella Ray Seasons One Skein. The Blue Sky Alpaca Yarn is for your practice 
swatches and the Ella Ray yarn is for your project. Colors may vary. And so this color is in the color 20. So it's purples and blues, grays and browns. It's really pretty. 76% um, acrylic, 14% wool, 10% palmade, which is nylon. Um, pretty squishy. It's not the softest. This is definitely softer than this. Go figure. Um, but the yarn's relatively the same weight. And actually, I think this is a thinner weight, honestly, than the Alpaca Sky. But it's neither here nor there. Um, So it's got 11 videos and the pattern flip over for the pick. So I have to go to Knit Crate and then use the code. And then I've got a fun extra, which are these guys. So it's Knit Picks Harmony Straight Needles. These classic straight needles deliver sharp tapered tips, radiant waves of color, and light white feel. Made of beautiful laminated birch wood. And these are a 10 inch size 8 or 5 millimeter. Sorry for the crinkle. Because it can't be any more crinkly than it was. Ooh, these are nice. Feels like it's got some sort of like oil on them that gives them a little bit of grip. Maybe. But yeah. It's rainbow. Oh, it said these are laminated, didn't it? Yeah, laminated. So yes, they've got some sort of sealant brush on them. They're really pretty. Love the colors. So, there's that. So I got some new knitting needles. And then. I have a sweet and soothing extra. We hope you enjoy the enclosed sweet soothing extra. It's just a little something extra to make your knitting time a bit more relaxing. And in this case, it's this guy, which smells divine. It is soap. I'm, I'm not too offended with this. This is actually, it is a soap sample, I want to say. Mm -hmm. It's spicy. It's sweet like it just it smells amazing so this is thrive handcrafts lemongrass sweet orange and blood orange it smells amazing artisan soap made from scratch with cold pressed vegetable oils no palm oil animal fats sulfates parabens uh, phthalates petroleum products synthetic fragrances or colorants just real soap made with love so and it feels so creamy, like it's and moisturizing, like I can't, mm, it smells so good. I can't wait to be able to use this. Um, I might have to commandeer the bathroom soap and put this in there because this mm. boyfriend doesn't really like um, hand soap, like bar soap like this, but he does like handmade and he loves organic, so he might go for this. So, so I'm sorry, Nick Creep. Bad review for me. Uh, I, I just, I can't, I can't support you. Thank you for taking the time to create a newbie crate and all, but I'm going to look somewhere else. Thanks. Um, so until next time, guys, I think that's it because I'm, I'm just, I have nothing else to talk about. Blather is, there's not a whole lot to talk about. Boyfriend comes home in a week, and so I'm just going to start cleaning. That's all I'm really going to do, and I have a baby shower tonight. So, like I said, not a whole lot to talk about in the blather section. I am going to be doing more uh, hand dyeing, and I can't wait. Like, I'm so excited to continue hand dyeing. And I'm going to be making more baby hats. I'm going to finish that sock and maybe cast on another one this week. So, I think that's going to cover everything. So, until next time, guys. Bye!